There are two actions that zinc has upon the body to influence testosterone. And I think that all guys really need to be paying attention to it because it's some of the lowest hanging fruit. And there's also a lot of misinformation out there, or just information that's a little bit confusing. Like for example, if you were to go work out right now and lift weights, okay, you would think that your level of testosterone in your body would influence what's called the hypertrophic effect, like how much muscle you would build, right? Well, not really, it's not quite that simple. It's more so the density of the adrenergic receptors, which we'll talk about, and zinc plays a very big role in that. Zinc has a two-part action to influence testosterone and how the testosterone affects us, especially as males. Let's dive in. I'll cut right to the chase in terms of foods that are rich in zinc. Okay, you've got fish, you've got shellfish, you've got uh, certain like seaweeds and things like that that have zinc, you've got legumes, you've got nuts, things like that. And if you're going to take zinc, I recommend that you pair it with selenium because if your selenium levels end up too high, or your zinc levels end up too high, they can impair each other. So just pairing them together ends up making things a little bit easier. And today's video is sponsored by Thrive Market. So if you're looking for foods to kind of throw into your regime, you may want to check them out. So that link is down below in the description. They're an online membership-based grocery store. So whether you're muscle building, whether you are doing paleo or vegan or whatever, they have something for you all in one place. And then it gets delivered right to your doorstep. So I use it a lot of times to stock up my pantry. Like if I'm looking for specific like keto baked goods, or maybe you're looking for gluten-free kind of like baking stuff for my wife, any things like that. So that link is down below in the description and it will save you 25% off your first order, plus get you a free gift since they are such an awesome sponsor on this channel. So check them out after this bit. So let's talk about the basics of how zinc influences testosterone first. Then we'll talk about the adrenergic receptor piece because it's a two-part equation. Okay, so there's a study published in the journal Nutrition. Okay, it found that when people restricted zinc through dietary restriction for 20 weeks, they saw a significant reduction in testosterone. We know anyone with like a science background or a research just I don't know, just knowledge, knows that correlation does not always equal causation. So we can look at that, we'd say, wow, that's pretty interesting, but it doesn't tell me the whole picture. Well, then you look at another piece that shows that zinc supplementation for six months in subjects that were deficient in zinc ended up leading to an increase from 8.3 nanomoles of testosterone all the way up to 16 nanomoles of testosterone. Okay, so now we see if you're zinc deficient, which very well could be the case for a lot of people, there's definitely a correlation there in terms of total testosterone, serum testosterone. But here's the big problem. Serum testosterone does not always mean everything, okay? You could go to the doctor and you could have a high level of testosterone, but if that testosterone is not biologically active and doing its job, then it's not any good. Now, I'm not talking about just the difference between what's called free and total testosterone. That matters too. Free testosterone is the level that is not bound to what's called sex hormone binding globulin. I don't need to go into details there. Okay, that is not what I'm talking about. That is important, but what I'm talking about is what is actually active at the tissue level and active at the receptor level. Okay, so we know that zinc plays a role in bringing up your testosterone if you're deficient in zinc. But now let's talk about what I opened this video with, which is very intriguing. There's a study that was published in the journal Frontiers of Physiology that demonstrated that the hypertrophic response of resistance training, okay, the muscle growth response, was not dependent upon testosterone. I'm not saying that testosterone levels don't matter, but what I am saying is this study shows that testosterone levels were one thing, but what was more important was the affinity for the adrenergic receptor to accept testosterone, okay? So what good is testosterone if we don't have it binding to the receptor properly, okay? So you could go lift weights, hope for hypertrophy, hope for that hypertrophic response, but if the receptor cannot receive the testosterone, it doesn't matter if your testosterone is five million. It's not gonna be able to do its job right. So essentially, these adrenergic receptors mediate the effect, good and bad. They are what we would call sort of a rate-limiting object or a rate-limiting step in this case. Well, good news in the world of zinc here. There was a study that was published in the journal Molecular Pharmacology that demonstrated that zinc improved how sensitive the receptor was to testosterone. It improved the affinity of the adrenergic receptor to testosterone, and actually other hormones too. So this is fascinating because this tells us that zinc is working in those two pathways. It is having an effect on actual serum testosterone levels, 
but then it's also having an effect on the receptor that receives the testosterone levels. Okay, now you've probably heard of like the supplement ZNA before, like zinc, magnesium, aspartate. Like that's a popular one, okay, because of that. And they claim a lot of testosterone effects. I don't necessarily know if the other components are as important as the zinc itself. One thing that we do have to be a little bit skeptical of is if we do not have a deficiency in zinc, are we still going to get a benefit from a zinc supplement? Okay, one of the things I want to caution you on is not to just overload on zinc though, okay? If you were to go and take, say, 100 milligrams of zinc or 200 milligrams of zinc, you can influence copper, you can influence selenium, you can influence other things in the body, other minerals that kind of throw off the axis. It's also very important for testosterone. So one of the things that I would recommend you do is start in very small increments, 10, 15 milligram zinc increments. But I think the best thing that you can do is start changing where you get some of your protein sources from. Okay, if you're normally getting protein from, say, chicken and beef and things like that, rotate it up a little bit. Start getting some of your protein from shellfish, okay, from mussels, from clams, from shrimp, from lobster. I know it's a little bit more expensive, but the zinc quality and the zinc quantity that's in that is going to be much better than a supplement form because it has the other bioavailable sort of supporting nutrients that go with it. Bioavailable is always best. And then if you don't start seeing differences there, then you can start adding in zinc supplementation to the mix. Okay, you don't need to go overboard because it's not worth canceling other minerals out. But the evidence is pretty awesome. I'll see you tomorrow.